to Chopstick Travel. I'm Luke. And I'm Sabrina. And today is the start of our new series, Street Food Around the World in Taiwan. In our first episode, today's episode, we are taking you to Hong Kong. With this close proximity to Taiwan, we are blessed with some really authentic Cantonese street foods. So in this episode, we're going to be doing a full day of eating Hong Kong style foods. Gonna get some dim sum. We're gonna have some really classic roasted meats and all kinds of street foods. It's gonna be a really great episode, so make sure you stay tuned until the end. Let's go. It is a very rainy day today, and we have come to a local fresh market in search of a classic Cantonese breakfast street food, and it should be just up here. Where are you from? Canada. Canada. Yeah. Okay. There is a man inside this market that is serving a very typical Cantonese dish, chong fun. And the way that he makes it is very interesting. He uses this rice flour that he's mixed with quite a bit of water. He lays the rice flour out with a ladle on top of a steaming sheet. And then on top of that, he'll put uh, whatever ingredients you want to order. We ordered a couple different kinds. So we got the pork, we got the egg, he put some lettuce on it, and then shrimp. And then he takes that sheet and stuffs it inside of the steamer, lets it steam away for maybe only a minute until it's done. And then once it's done, he pulls it out and scrapes it right off. And then they'll top it with a uh, thick soy sauce. And it makes a great breakfast, a very typical dish in Hong Kong. We've got it here though in Taipei. And we've got all the shrimp, there's all kinds of ingredients. And you can see that rice flour gets this really unique uh, texture to it, almost like uh, gelatinous and gooey. Let me try it, I can see a little bit of pork in there. Mm. Yum. It's got a really smooth texture. It doesn't take much to uh, chew it down. And then the flavor is mainly from that sauce. I gotta go in and get some uh, with the shrimp. And then we've got a little bit of chili over here too. So I'll put a little bit of chili. And then there's these little pickles as well. And I'll just get a big, oh yeah, I can see some egg and some of that lettuce. Mm. It's really hearty with all those ingredients, but it still feels light at the same time. We ordered the version that's 130 Taiwan dollars. Comes with, as I mentioned, the shrimp, the pork, the egg, and I love it with that chili sauce. I could just sit here all morning and eat this stuff. It's so good. And we've just got this one little table that we're sitting at. This is mostly a takeout stall, I think, right within the market. With all these different ingredients, this might be one of the most deluxe chong fun we have come across yet. Yeah. Look how big these shrimp are, they're <laughs> huge. Yeah. But the rest of it is like mm. so chewy and mm. just delicious. The sauce is just a little bit sweet and a little bit salty. Yeah, really good. That was a great breakfast, but arguably in Hong Kong, brunch is more important than breakfast. Otherwise known as yum cha, it involves sitting for hours drinking tea and eating steamed dim sums. We've come to one of the most famous places to have dim sum in Taipei. It's the Brother Hotel, and we're gonna go up to their popular plum blossom room to have yum cha. This is a beautiful restaurant on the second floor of the Brother Hotel. They have an extensive dim sum restaurant and they're serving authentic Cantonese cuisine. We're gonna order up some of the classic dim sum dishes, but it wouldn't be yum cha without the tea. We've got tea guan yin, which is my favorite type of tea. And you just sit here for hours and eat with all your friends and family. It's a really relaxing atmosphere. One of the really cool features of this restaurant is that they roll the dim sum baskets around on the cart. You can pick some of the dim sums off there, but of course some of them you just have to order a la carte. But that's really a traditional style and I love to see it here in Taiwan. 
to see it. Our order has arrived. We've got all our steam baskets full of dim sum and I've got a special one hiding underneath here for dessert, keeping it warm with this one stacked on top. But first I gotta start with this. This is one of the most famous. This is the Shao Mai. So it's got an egg wrapper filled with pork and shrimp and then a little bit of crab roe on top. Mm. Mm. It's got a very thin wrapper on the outside and a nice firm kind of pork meatball minced up. That slight flavor of seafood from that crab roe. I'm gonna go for one of these guys next. This is the beef meatballs. There's all these little peas on the inside too. Very classic one. Mm. Oh, that was tender. That beef ball is definitely more tender than the Shao Mai and just a slight sweetness to it. Nice with those peas as well. This one is the Har Gao. It is filled with shrimp and it's got this thin kind of translucent wrapper. That's the perfect little one biter and it's actually got some sweet corn inside. All of these dim sums just go so nicely with tea too. You just gotta wash them all down with it. This is my all time favorite dim sum. It is the Cha Shao Bao. And you can see that on the inside, it is just filled with that beautiful braised pork. Uh, always make sure you rip the little piece of parchment paper off the bottom. And let's try this. That pork is very sweet on the inside and the bun on the outside is just so pillowy and soft. It's like eating a cloud. This one is the egg tart, and you can see that flaky layered crust on the outside. Mm. Oh, that's a beautiful little pastry. So flaky, so crispy, and then a nice creamy custard on the inside. The atmosphere is crazy. There's people that have been here long before us, and they're just sitting enjoying all the dim sums. We're really starting to get busy in here, and it's just got a lively atmosphere to it. Everyone's drinking tea, eating dim sum. It's really a nice place to be. So this is our special uh, dessert. These things are crazy. They're like molten lava custard inside of a bun, but actually it's kind of cooled down now because we were filming, so it's probably not gonna be too hot. Oh yeah. That's a little disappointing. I think it got too cooled down. Usually it just runs out, but it's almost like solidified. Still nice and sweet and delicious. One thing to note too is that some of the most expensive uh, and Michelin starred restaurants are actually Cantonese restaurants here in Taipei. And actually the only three Michelin star restaurant in Taiwan is a Cantonese restaurant. So they definitely have some really good Cantonese food here. The way that these carts work is they're continuously moving them past the tables, enticing the customers into picking some. You can just pick whatever you want right off of the cart and they'll serve it to you right on the spot. A couple things to note about this place, it's actually 24 seven. So you can enjoy dim sum yum cha all day long, every day. And uh, the tea is unlimited, so don't worry about drinking too much tea. You can sit here all day. So the people at the restaurant were, were really friendly. They saw we were filming and uh, they gave us one of these desserts complimentary. It's got a bunch of taro inside and it's in a coconut milk broth. There's all kinds of other little things, green beans, red beans. There's some lotus seeds. I'm just gonna go in for a big uh, spoonful. And this is a very classic Hong Kong dessert. Mm. So coconutty. Wow, that's so fresh. I love it. It's not sweet really at all. Windows full of hanging roasted meats is a typical sight when walking the streets of Hong Kong. So for lunch, we've come to a place that's serving traditional Cantonese roasted meats. This is the spot right here, so let's order some up.
that this is a real local hangout and taxi drivers apparently frequent this place quite often. They specialize, of course, in the Cantonese roasted meats. We ordered up a plate of all of their specialties. So the first off is the roasted duck. This is the chashu pork. We've got the pork sausage here, and then we've got the roasted uh, suyuk, the crispy pork belly there. You can see that crispy edge. There's a bunch of vegetables. We get some little uh, fried anchovies here, cucumbers, cabbage, some pickles, a little bit of tofu, but I'm not really interested in that. I'm here for the meat, and I think I gotta start with a piece of the suyuk. It's always my favorite. Oh yeah. It's crispy, it's greasy, oily, fatty, a little bit salty. It's sinfully delicious, but really tasty. Let's try the chashu. You can see that nice red exterior. Mm. Mm. That one's all about the flavor. It's got that honey glaze and it's got a really nice sweetness to it. And I can taste a little bit of like Shaoxing wine, uh, rice wine in there. It's got a little bit of an alcoholic flavor. And next up, sausage. Cantonese meats are definitely leaning on the sweeter side and some foreigners or Westerners might be a little caught off guard by it. Last but not least, we got the crowd favorite, the crispy roast duck. Mm -hmm. That one's not very good. There's absolutely no crunch to that skin. It's very duck flavored and actually the meat is very dry. That one's definitely not my favorite. It's probably the least favorite out of all of them. I'd have to give it up for shu yuk number one, probably the sausage number two, and then the chashu. I'm gonna go back for a piece of this shu yuk. This is just so good. That crispy layer on the top is ridiculous. It's like pork crackling, just completely crunch, but then disintegrates, melts. I'd have to say flavor-wise, probably not as good as in Hong Kong, but price-wise really makes up for it. Only 150 Taiwan dollars for this whole plate of all kinds of meats, and you definitely can't find a deal like that in Hong Kong. So pretty good though. Next up, we are going for some afternoon tea. There is definitely a strong British influence in Hong Kong. We're gonna tell you a little bit more about that inside our next stop, which is right here behind me. This spot is so cool. It is decorated in everything Hong Kong. There are wallpapers with street scenes from Hong Kong. It's got the memorabilia, all the carnation condensed milk, which is popular in the milk tea. Uh, all of the tables are actually named after the districts in Hong Kong and just very reminiscent, almost nostalgic of like a 80s or 90s scene from Hong Kong with the bright colors, the neon lights. We ordered up some typical dishes for an afternoon tea. I've ordered up the milk tea and it comes in this incredible black and white brand cup, this mug. Oh, I love these so much. You see them all over the place in Hong Kong. If you know where to get one, let me know down in the comment box. I really want one. So milk tea, super popular in Hong Kong. It kind of originates from the colonial period where the British would put milk in their tea and then Hong Kongers wanted to do something similar. So they used condensed milk to put it in their black tea and now you can find it everywhere in Hong Kong. Let's try this one out. Oh yeah, no sugar added yet. I think I'll add a little bit of sugar. It is strong, it is creamy from that condensed milk. Oh, I love it. I love this place. It just feels like we're in Hong Kong. To accompany my milk tea, I've got this monstrous French toast with all of that melted butter and syrup on top. You can see that. So this, this style of dining is uh, cha chan tang, which is a very Western influence type of dining, very simple foods. And this is one of the typical dishes, the French toast. And usually, yeah, it's probably filled with peanut butter. So this thing is just intense. It's gonna be a lot of calories. It's completely fried. Look at that. Holy smokes. Let me try that. Wow. 
That's a lot. <laughs> this is the opposite of a light dessert. This is a heavy dessert. There's a lot going on there, a lot of bread a lot of butter, a lot of syrup, and then that peanut butter on the inside is actually quite strong. It's like the main flavor, actually. Very sweet. Um, I'm gonna need Sabrina's help to help finish this. Wow. So I've ordered myself the iced lemon tea, which I always get in Hong Kong. It's a really strong black tea, and there are whole lemons inside, just big slices of lemon, which you can crush up yourself with the spoons they provide. And this one actually looks like a really thick and strong tea, making a little bit of a mess. Let's give that a try. Oh yeah. <laughs> the black tea is almost like syrupy, it's so thick. And then those lemons are really fresh, gives it a nice sourness. It's a really nice way to cool yourself off on a hot day. And of course I have the Hong Kong famous pineapple bun, but it's not actually made of pineapple at all. It's actually a sweet bun that has been filled with butter and now it's all melted, but wow, that looks amazing. And it gets its name from the exterior, the, the appearance of the bun, rather than having pineapple inside. Let's give it a bite. I love that. The sweetness mixed with the saltiness of the butter. And it's just crumbling in my hand. Just check it out. I'm You're making, making a mess. mess. I know. It's just crumbling as soon as I took a bite. But that crumble is coming from this nice, sweet, crunchy layer that's on the top. It's very delicious. This place is just so cool. It's called Boji Hong Kong Restaurant. We just wanted to come for the uh, Cha Chan Tang style foods, the afternoon tea, if you will. And it's pretty good. I love the tunes in here too. Very old school Hong Kong. So we really like this idea for the series Street Food Around the World in Taiwan because of course we cannot travel right now but luckily Taiwan is blessed with a lot of cuisines from other countries so we have ideas to do uh, a lot of other countries. I don't want to give too many of them away but maybe Japan for sure, Korea, Indonesia, a couple others so you'll have to subscribe and stay tuned for those. So the only thing that seems reasonable after a long day of eating on this wet and rainy day is to have a hot dessert. So we're heading into our next spot right behind me here. So this place is definitely a little bit more modern than some of the street food places we were visiting today, but it's recommended by Michelin for five years consecutively. It's a typical Hong Kong dessert. This is the hot sesame mixed with walnut, and look at just the crazy colors going on there, that black sesame, and then you get that brown walnut, and I'm gonna mix this up a little bit better, and that black sesame is just kind of taking over the color here, and that is super thick and creamy looking, and this is piping hot. Let me give it a try here. Oh yeah, oh man, it's so strong. You can taste that nutty walnut, and then it's definitely got a little bit of a sweetness, that sesame flavor, of course, and it's just really creamy, and it soothes your throat. Perfect for a nice cold day. Look at that, that is so cool. So what did we just realize? We actually just realized that this is the exact same place that we visited in Hong Kong uh, maybe a year ago. The same dessert, so that's why it tastes the exact same. It's very authentic. We didn't know it was a chain. <laughs> we had no idea it was a chain, and we kind of just picked this by chance. And uh, yeah, it's, same? It's, it tastes the exact same. It's delicious. All right, what a day of eating Cantonese, Hong Kong style food here in Taipei City. I hope you liked the first episode of our street food around the world in Taiwan series. As I mentioned, of course we can't travel, so we're very eager to travel. And we came up with this idea to taste the cuisines of the world. Luckily Taiwan is influenced by a lot of other places, so you can get really good authentic foods from other countries. So if you've got a country in mind that you wanna see us film, comment down to below and uh, maybe we can make a video. We'll try to do a lot of research and pull it together. Yeah. 
and today just incredible day. What was your favorite thing we ate, Sabrina? Definitely that chunk fun that we had in the morning. Oh, yeah. That was awesome. Loaded with tons of ingredients. Yeah. Made fresh. Loved it. I'd have to say it was the yum cha, the dim sum. I never knew there was such a huge dim sum culture here yeah. in Taiwan. So really fun to explore these new cuisines and it's new for us too. Yeah. So really awesome. If you guys would like to become a Patreon, you can click the link down in the description. You get access to our monthly blooper reels, also our personally curated food maps that we put new cities on regularly and all kinds of other fun perks. So check out our Patreon down below. Like this video, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you're notified when we post our next episode from Taiwan. See you. Bye. Bye.